the reason when I began to read my scriptures without my denominational glasses on, it became real to me that the baptism of the Holy Spirit and speaking in tongues was valid for today. Tell me briefly how you got filled with the Spirit. Well, after a year and a half of research, I'm talking about... <laughs> you are really a cerebral yeah, guy. I, I, I'm thinking, I, I want the real and I want the authentic. So I had this copious research and I came to the conclusion that it was real and I went to a Pentecostal prayer meeting. I, and they ended up laying hands on me and one gentleman weighed 140 pounds soaking wet, put his index finger on my forehead and he said, be filled with the Holy Spirit. Instantly at that moment, the Holy Ghost came upon me I'm falling out in the spirit and I began to speak in tongues. And my life since that moment, Sid, has never been the same. It was the greatest thing that ever happened to me outside of my salvation experience. New York Times. Mm -hmm. The New York Times newspaper had an article about tongues. What did it say? Well, they followed a research that was done in uh, United Kingdom. And it was a group of 1,000 evangelicals that this research was conducted on. And the research came to the conclusions, now listen to this, came to the conclusion that those who speak in tongues consistently and regularly have fewer mental disorders than those who do not. And the New York Times reported on that research and affirmed that speaking in tongues is valid. And how about the University of Pennsylvania study? You know, the, New York, uh, the, the neuroscience department of the University of Pen, uh, Pennsylvania, led by Andrew Newberg, conducted a study. Uh, it, it's just absolutely phenomenal that when they took people that were praying in tongues, Sid, they analyzed the brain. They looked at what was going on in the brain, the activity. They discovered that the frontal lobe, which literally controls the speech of a person's life, when we were, when they were uh, speaking in English and praying in English, it was firing. It was active. I mean, it was a lot of activity going on in their frontal lobe. But when they transitioned to tongues, when that individual spoke in tongues, all the activity in the frontal lobe went dormant. That proves it's not coming from the brain. It affirms what Paul said in 1 Corinthians 14, that when I pray in tongues, my spirit prays, but my understanding is unfruitful. Huh. And this is a university, University of Pennsylvania, led by a gentleman that uh, literally had a degree in nuclear medicine and nuclear cardiology. So this is not just some kind of a cheap research. This was done at the University of Pennsylvania that says the front of a person's brains goes dormant when they pray in tongues. No wonder Paul said, I pray in tongues more than any man. He knew that that was the secret of his power. Um, you, you told me that uh, there was a medical doctor that did scientific tests about praying in tongues and the immune system. Uh, a fascinating study that we uncovered and discovered. Carl Peterson at ORU uh, did a study on the effects of praying in the Holy Spirit, praying in tongues. And he came to the conclusion in his research that if you pray in tongues consistently, now his, the language that he uses is very important, that, that there are extended periods of time in praying in tongues, not just uh, one or two sentences once or twice a week, but extended times of praying in tongues, that the immune system of that individual gets boosted 35 to 40 percent. 35 to 40 percent their immune system gets activated. Why? Because praying in tongues does impact a part of the brain where your immune system is centered, and that's the hypothalamus. So they ran the test and found out that that part of the brain is activated and, and functioning at a high level when we pray in tongues, and it releases a supernatural immunity in our bodies. Mm -hmm.